the 2013 NFL Draft was one for the record books. We saw some amazing talent make their cases for Hall of Fame caliber careers, and we saw others fall short of expectations by quite a bit. And now that 2013 was 10 years ago, which is crazy enough, today we highlight some of the notable selections made in that year's draft. If you would like a part two to this list or any other years, be sure to let us know in the comments section. Let's get into it. Number one overall, Eric Fisher. The Chiefs went for an offensive tackle with the first pick in the draft to help block the newly acquired QB, Alex Smith. He played left tackle in college, but was assigned to play right tackle as a rookie. And man, did he struggle. He ranked 70th out of 76 tackles in 2013, where he allowed seven sacks and 35 hurries. Andy Reid switched him to left tackle for the 2014 season where he played better. He played good enough for the Chiefs to pick up his fifth year option and then sign him to a four year extension later that offseason. Fisher was holding his own for the most part, but never up to the level of a better tackle in the NFL, let alone a number one overall pick. He won a Super Bowl with the Chiefs in 2019 and was released two years after in 2021. He since bounced around with the Colts and Dolphins, but currently remains a free agent. Number eight overall, Tavon Austin. Tavon Austin was drafted out of West Virginia as a three-sport athlete growing up, playing baseball, track, and well, of course, football. The Rams drafted him eighth overall, and he was immediately a special teams contributor, playing to a level like that of Devin Hester. He had a punt return touchdown in each of his first three seasons and eased his way as a solid producer on offense. All of this was good enough for him to sign a four-year extension worth $42 million in 2016. But in 2017, his stats took a nosedive despite the Rams succeeding under then-new head coach Sean McVay. And this lack of production led to speculation that the Rams might move on from Austin, and they agreed to a restructured contract before trading him to Dallas. Hoping to revitalize his career in Dallas, Austin impressed early with a touchdown but missed significant time with a groin injury he suffered earlier in the season. He was able to return in time for the wild card round of that year's playoffs, and hey, he almost returned a punt for a touchdown, but it was called back because of a penalty. You gotta love refs. He bounced around to a couple of squads after his time in Dallas, but currently also remains an unsigned free agent. Number 27 overall, DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins was the second receiver taken after Tavon Austin, and he enjoyed the success any NFL player would wish for. He was arguably one of the league's top wideouts, right up there with Odell Beckham and Dez Bryant. He impressed immediately as a rookie, where he was named to the all-rookie team after posting 802 yards in 16 games. And in five of the following six seasons in Houston, Hopkins was a 1,000-yard receiver just missing the mark one year with 954 yards. But it's not always the yards that matter, it's the production and what you do with those yards. Don't worry though, D-Hop's got you covered. In his Houston Texans career, Hopkins scored 54 times. D-Hop stayed productive in Houston despite Bill O'Brien receiving lots of criticism, especially after ending the 2019 season in a heartbreaking and embarrassing fashion after blowing a 24-0 lead. Hopkins was traded to the Cardinals in a highly critical trade and gave the Cardinals three seasons of production before releasing him in the 2023 offseason. As of the time of this recording, Hopkins remains unsigned, but we see him signing with a contender like the Chiefs or Bills to help add a Super Bowl to his resume. Number 29 overall, Cordero Patterson. Once a Vikings legend, Patterson was drafted early because of his versatility, knowledge of the game, and speed and speed on kickoff returns might be one of his best attributes. Just like Tavon Austin, Patterson impressed early with his kickoff returning skills. He ran back two for a score as a rookie, while tacking on four more rushing and three receiving. So yeah, Patterson has been reliable as a versatile weapon. He tested free agency after his time in Minnesota and signed with the Raiders, where he was then traded to the Patriots, and then signed with the Bears, until most recently signing with the Falcons in 2021 where he has been ever since. So far, he leads the league in most kickoff return touchdowns in history with nine, when he broke the record of eight in 2023. He won a Super Bowl with Tom Brady the one year he was in New England, tied the NFL record for the longest kickoff return, 
which is 109 yards, and has been to four Pro Bowls. Yeah, it's safe to say that he has been enjoying his NFL success. Let's hurdle our way out of the first round and look at some more notable players drafted in later rounds. But before we do, we ask you to support our channel by subscribing. Your support goes a long way in helping us create more and more videos, and we thank you for all of your support. Number 48 overall, Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell was drafted to fill the void in Pittsburgh's running room to take it to the next level. At the time of his arrival, the Steelers were still a hot team, coming off two Super Bowl wins in 2007 and 2010, but were needing that missing piece in the running game to jumpstart Pittsburgh to its new level of greatness. His first NFL game was in London, but that didn't stop him from putting on a show as he ran in two scores. He continued his level of success through the following years and proved himself to be a top five NFL back. And just like Cordero Patterson established himself as a dual threat back as he was explosive in both the rushing and passing games, Bell's game increased, and after his rookie contract was up, the Steelers placed the franchise tag on him. The Steelers could have paid him there and called it a day, but decided to give it another year. And in that year, Bell went absolutely nuclear, posting 1,291 rushing yards and nine scores on top of 655 receiving yards and two touchdowns. Bell proved his worth and wanted to be paid like such. He went as far to suggest that he would sit out the year or even retire if he was franchise tagged again. And of course, they franchise tagged him again. But this time, Bell refused to sign the tag. He missed the entire 2018 season in his holdout and became eligible to play again in 2019. Awaiting the 2019 season, the Jets thought they made a huge improvement to their game when they inked him to a four-year deal worth over $52 million. And in 2020, things started to go downhill fast for Bell. He missed four games early on IR, and then in his return, the Jets lost, which caused him to like a tweet suggesting the Jets should trade him. After all the drama this caused, Bell was released and was picked up by the Chiefs. He bounced around the Ravens and Buccaneers in recent years, but remains still an unsigned free agent, possibly never seeing an NFL field again. Undrafted, Adam Thielen. Arguably one of the best talents to come out of the 2013 draft class wasn't even drafted at all. That player being Adam Thielen, when the Vikings signed him as an undrafted free agent out of Minnesota State University. A Minnesotan his whole life, he went to high school in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota before going to Minnesota State. As all things come full circle for Thielen, the Vikings picked him up where he ended up making a roster spot, but not until after 2014's preseason performances. He eased his way into the roster, and as he proved himself more and more, he solidified himself as one of Minnesota's best receivers of the mid to late 2010s. After he balled out in 2016, the Vikings awarded him with a three-year extension in 2017. And then in 2019, Thielen and the Vikings agreed to terms on a four-year deal worth $64 million. The deal would tie him through Minnesota through 2023, but the Vikings recently cut him in a salary cap move. But for Thielen, he found himself a new home in Carolina, where he'll have Bryce Young to catch passes from after signing a three-year deal. Number 159, Micah Hyde. The Packers drafted Micah Hyde in the fifth round and was put as the fifth cornerback on the depth chart. He saw early action as a punt returner and on special teams in addition to his backup role in the secondary. After a rookie season where he showed a lot of potential, Hyde won the starting free safety job over a Ha Ha Clinton Dix, but then converted over to strong safety. And in 2016, Hyde was named the number one nickelback and racked up 58 tackles and three interceptions. He tested free agency and landed with the Bills in 2017, where he has been ever since. We know we couldn't get to every single possible player in the video, so if you want a part two or want another year, let us know in the comment section below. Be sure to support the movement and drop a subscription and smash the like button. That's all for this one, and we'll see you next time here on Endzone Football.